Boss. Hello, everyone. What are the best guns under $1,200 right now? Hmm. I don't know. There's a few. I guess we're going to have to see. You know what I'm going to pick? I'm excited for this video. <laughs> So, so studio everybody. situation Hello. is kind of weird. Felt we just do this video in the shop today. Plus, you guys haven't seen the store in a bit. Yeah. Look at all that. That's a Kenty. Answering all your emails. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we're going to talk we over here. We can't, dog, you forgot to mention, we can't tell them the secret of why we don't have a YouTube channel. I haven't. Anymore. I kept my mouth shut. I'm not going to tell them. <laughs> he hasn't that. told the channel yet. <laughs> yeah, no, you can. <laughs> boss can do that one. But all right. So we're going to talk about a bunch of guns that are under $1,200 today. So I'm just looking at my ugly mug in the mirror here. All right, guys. What are we going to start with? Well, first off, we've got our little handy-dandy comparison video here. As you can see, I've added a few because Doug only did an Excel sheet for one and two. Is that even focusing on me? No, not hardly. Anyways. Yeah, it's fine. You guys can see yeah, it. Too. The point being is that uh, we are going to use all our common criteria. This is the best guns under $1,200. Why did we choose twelve hundred dollars, Doug? Because it's mid tier. It's mid tier. It's ex it's nice. You get some good features, but you're not totally breaking yep. the bank. Yep. And um, so it incorporates the Die DSR Plus, the HK Army Shocker Amp, the regular Shocker Amp. We've got the G Tech One Seventy R. And what am I missing, Doug? Oh, duh. MacDev. Mac XDR, which is actually kind of a relatively uncommon gun that gets overlooked. So we are going to do a little comparison between all of them and discuss all the different features. They're good. Sounds good. Okay. Right, so what's the first one we're going to pull off the wall here? All right. Well, let's go by criteria. So first things first, we're going to do a little packaging here. I've got all the cases right here for all five of the different markers being considered. We have the XDR case. We have the HK Army Shocker Amp case. We have the regular Shocker Amp case. We have the Die DSR Plus case. And the Try and Trusty 170R case. So we are going to do a little packaging comparison between all these. All right. All right, Doug, so which one do you want to start with? Let's we'll start on this side. We'll start with this. So The 170R? Yes. Okay. So first and foremost, you're going to have this nice cardboard outer box. We're going to pull the aluminum case that it comes in out. And as you can tell, we're going to open that up. And oh, they didn't give me a gun. To get, oh, Bob Saget. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so it's going to come with a really nice branded barrel cover. It is going to come with a paper manual. You want to show the peeps what that's oh, we're all looking. about. We're yeah, looking so right it's, at her. it's really nice. That's really nice. Um, you got a full parts kit, typical Planet Clips packaging for anybody that's seen us on YouTube before. Um, full thing of grease, and then a brand new <laughs> set of Allen keys. Nothing super exciting here, but um, Planet does a really good job of keeping it standard across the board. You have everything that you need and more. And Joel, yep. what's one of your favorite features about their casing and what they come with? Color, paper, manual. <laughs> Also the parts kit. I've heard him rave about oh, the parts kit. Yeah, well, the thing about the parts kit is everything is labeled, so there's no confusion there. And I'll show you here in a second why that matters. Next up, we have the Die DSR Plus case. Wait, I'm going to do the Joel thing. He hates this. <sighs> Super important because, yeah, I do really hate that. In fact, here. <laughs> let's get that out of the way, too, because, Lord, I don't even understand why they waste the time or the effort to do it. Like, I just don't get it. Like It's attractive, just, but, eh. Debatable. We want the gun. Anyway. Yeah, right, exactly. All right, so we've got the Die DSR Plus case, as you can see here, a set of Allen keys there, pretty standard. You've got this super cheap, uh, I don't understand why they did that, barrel cover. It doesn't even have die on it. Uh, Unbranded. But I will say a barrel cover is a barrel cover at the end of the day. Uh, we've got a quick start guide, your warranty card, um, a little bit of grease, not as much as is going to come with the 170R. And you've got the battery. This is a point of interest that we've discussed before. The 9 volt stays out of the gun until you get it and you actually have to put it in. That's a very smart idea in my opinion because if you've got a marker that's been sitting in a packaging for a while, obviously it's going to lose some power. So that is a nice touch. Gun goes uh, much, much, much on the battery. <laughs> Alright, so the DSR Plus parts kit case. Colored O-rings. Kind of interesting. 
Some people say they're lower quality. I personally don't <coughs> think one way or another towards the O-rings. I think they're O-rings. I do like the fact that they're colored. I have so. mostly only ever heard the argument that they are of lower quality. I haven't. Here's my point toward that. <clears throat> I see die guns go boom a lot. That's all I'll say. Okay. Doug's got a little bias towards die. Listen. We're going to put that out there as well. Listen. It's fine. Um, I think that die guns are just as, in my opinion, like I shoot an M3 Plus. I've seen a lot of the SR Pluses. I personally haven't seen that issue. But Doug's entitled to his opinion. All right. So next up, guys, we have the HK Army Shocker, or no, the regular Shocker amp. Mm -hmm. Doug's personal beauty. So he's biased in the other way towards this one. <laughs> I'm just here to give you guys the info. Doug's trying to tell you exactly what to buy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so H or the Shocker Amp, uh, like your quick start guide here. It's going to be like uh, two pages. It's going to give you all the different details on the bolts. It's going to tell you how to power the marker up. Full manual, once again, this is not, um, but you can access the full manual online. Same thing with DSR Plus. It's just going to have a quick start guide. Uh, parts kit is the worst out of all of them, I would say. I think I'd have to check the Mac Dev case. I mean, unlabeled. Tell me, no what color size coding. Ring any of those are. Let's just say pause, there's pause, a reason pause. I always go to Yasser. For all of you that don't personally know a master uh, DLX tech, it can be a real pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Uh, full um, Allen keys. This is nice. I do like that. Shocker does a good job of that. And then lube is going to be one ounce, very similar to your 170R. DSR Plus cases, or DSR Plus does not come with as much lube. Nothing on that side. So, HK Army Shocker Amp, I'm not really going to go on. It's the same exact as the Shocker Amp. Only difference <coughs> is that you get the, you get the little Army logo. Oh, I will say, I do like the black and gold. Who cares? <laughs> All right. <coughs> and then last but not least, whoa. We have the MacDev XDR. Um, so MacDev actually does a decent job. Okay. Give them some credit. It's just not a color manual, it's but I mean, color. I'd put that in second place. Yes, I would, as far as the actual manual goes. Check this out. Jeez. Hmm. Hey, Shocker, do this from now on, please. Just give us like a little card. It would take you two seconds to tell us what size our rings they are. Um, so MacDev does a good job there. There's some extra screws, an extra soft tip bolt. Uh, insert there and all that good stuff. Branded. A branded barrel cover. Lube, same size as <clears throat> the die. A couple or, uh, Allen keys and then your data cable here. Um, okay, so they give stuff. you that. Yeah, so. Does the DSR come with that? The data cable? Uh, it does. Okay, I'll, yep, just, I'll it does. take you with it. Does. So, all said, I don't know, Doug, what do you think? Who if wins I, the packaging game? If I had to what actually really rank like? these. Uh huh. I'm just gonna put them in order. Put the can you put the XDR there? Yeah, I'd agree with that. And then I'm gonna scooch these out. And then just because I like the black and gold more. Now kiss. Yeah. There you have it. <clears throat> so for me, 170R. Best to worst. Yeah, I'd agree with that. 170R, color manual, uh, label parts kit, more parts than the XDR. More wrenches. Better, more lube. Yep, more lube. Yeah, and aluminum case, which yep. is nice. Um, good zipper and all that stuff. Protectiveness-wise, I don't think any of these are going to be any better no, or worse yeah, than the other. Well, it's going to protect the gun. Yeah, it's, it'll do kind of the same. Yeah. This is, I guess, a little less protective than some, but, but not by much. Yeah. But yeah, so that comes with a nice manual and gives you data cable. Even though <clears throat> the shockers, like, you can flash them as well. Like, you can put a data cable in them for software updates. It does not give it to you. I've never gotten a cable coming with mine. So, uh, then the die, I do actually like this is a decent sized case. I think this is actually the most compact as well. So I will give them that. But for me as well here, <clears throat> sorry, I'm just kind of clearing my throat. Want to open it again for me here. I can actually set this thing up. Huh? I'm opening it. I'm looking into it again here. I love that there's a divider. Just the amount of lube they give you is minimal and they're, uh, Colored O-rings, I'm still not entirely convinced. But I would say it's pretty good. It's protective. Like I said, compact. I like yeah. that a lot about I'd it. I'd say the XDR and the DSR Plus are close. Yeah. For sure. <clears throat> All right, Doug. So moving forward, we're going to actually pull these markers down from the wall now. Sounds good. Here, Next I'm gonna... thing up on the list is the barrel. 
spread these out a little bit. All right, guys. So we've got the 170R. There's my. We've got the XDR. We've got the die DSR plus. We have HK Shocker. Give me that silver one. That's cute. And what was the last one? <coughs> the regular Shocker. The regular amp. Do the blue one. What color? That blue. blue that. Purple? No. That. You're saying purple. 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 Are you deaf? Purple. All right, fine. Okay. All right, cool. Well, I mean, I can do the tiger stripe. That one's sick. Oh, does that also Let's fit under the, the under the uh, under the pricing scheme? Uh, it is under the pricing scheme, but uh, also underneath the reaching capabilities of me currently. He's six three. What the hell? All right, guys. So here we are. We have the shocker amp, the HK shocker, the DSR plus in a PGA color, the XDR, and then we've got the uh, Try and Trusty G Tech one seventy R. Price point wise, we're at nine hundred dollars, eight fifty. 1,000 to 1,100, depending upon base colors compared to <coughs> um, PGA colors. This is a PGA color, so you're going to be at 1,100. HK Shocker base colors is 1,200. That's the main reason why we did it under 1,200 was to incorporate the HK Shocker into this. And then we've got the regular Shocker amp, which is going to come in at $900. I can't believe the color of that vibrant was only 900. That's pretty nice. That's it's pretty nice. It's a deep purple. It's always interesting. Like, their purples change, which yeah. is actually kind of cool, in my opinion. So, Get a little all right, variety. Doug, we're here to talk about barrels. <clears throat> We've got the Freak XL barrel system with both the Shocker amp and the HK Shocker. We've got the Tried and Trusty and probably one of the longest running barrel systems of all time, the Die UL on the um, DSR Plus. That's actually, so like the, the, the Freak system is also one of the other longest that running. Do you remember which came first? No. I can't, I want to say the I, Freak. Well, the regular. No, nah, I'm incorrect. I mean, Freak XL is compared to the Freak <coughs> regular Freak. So. Sure, but the yeah. the Freak platform, and then um, that's got the they're, what? They're close. The Shaft Early Five. Two thousands. Shaft Five. Yep. So, um, already, uh, the you know very basic barrels between the XDR and that. So I'm gonna rule <coughs> those out. So the debate becomes between these two, between the UL barrel system and the Freak XL barrel system. Doug, I already know that you're gonna say Freak XL. Yes, but I'll tell you why. You know, I'll even set it up on this end so we can see my pretty face. Or to do that too. So <clears throat> I'm going to pick the Freak XL. It's not too much of bias. My reasoning: there are more sizes available that you can get for this guy. Because the UL side for the backs, the sizes. How many, Joel, in total do they make? One, two, three, four, five. I think I want to say it's around eight or nine different sizes there, Doug. Oh well, for 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 the Gog for the Freak system, I do know it's eight. They make eight sizes for Kay. Freak. For the die system, I think it might be like four. Is he trying to give me a four? Yeah, it's four. four. So half as many potential sizes that you can realistically be using. All right, so Doug, I understand why. Eight as compared to four, understandable. Is it more expensive too to buy a whole barrel back as opposed to just buying like individual, like yeah. even if you were to only have four of each, right? Buy three more sizes here and then buy the other three here, I'm pretty sure this would cost you more because you're buying an entire there, pack. Yeah, you're looking at like 40 to $50, or something like that per back. Um, it is going like to take something to mention is with the DSR Plus that you are going to be able to get the, um, you are going to be able to get the ULS backs in it. The tip will, in, the tip will accept the ULS backs. Oh, so the, the longer bore? The longer bore. Mm. Yes, correct. They come with like the M3 Plus. So there is that. So if, um, I, if I had to rank the barrels, it would be the Freak, then okay. the Die, then the Planet, then the XDR. All right. So then we're going <coughs> to give the winner to that barrel system. We're going to give that to the HK Shocker or the regular Shocker amp. Mm. I personally am going to go with the UL barrel system. I know that like money wise and everything else like that. Freak XL is good, but I do like the UL barrel system. That's, That's okay. one of my favorite barrel systems. Um, sound signature is the big, biggest reason for me. It's not like an accuracy thing. The other thing that I like about this is that um, you can get carbon fiber backs. Oh. So like I have a personal, like really expensive carbon fiber back set that I use for basically any marker. I just keep my set no matter what. Gotcha. And then if it's auto cocker thread, I like to, to throw that on. So okay. I'm gonna go DSR plus, but they're both really comparable. I think for people that don't really care too much about the sound signature, I think that the Freak XL is probably the way to go. Better value. Uh, better value. Definitely better value. I just like 
the sound signature, and that's probably because I'm an OG guy. Like, you know, I, I like the, the old school <laughs> vibe. All right, next next up is feed neck. <clears throat> we got Ooh. the same feed neck between the regular shocker amp and the HK shocker amp. It is going to have a thumb wheel, which is really nice, and it's going to have a little metal latch there. Um, the DSR Plus does not have a thumb wheel, um, but it does have a really nice high quality like metal clamp. Um, I really like the metal clamp on this. Uh, the XDR is going to have metal clamp as well. Same issue as with the DSR Plus. You are not going to have the um, the thumb wheel. And then the GTEC 170R is the going big to have a thumb big old thumb wheel boy. Yep, yep. So if I was gonna go feedback, <clears throat> I'm going to have to automatically roll these two out because yep. they don't have a thumb wheel right. for the amount of money that you're paying. I'm probably going to go either Shocker Amp or I'm going to go 170R. Can you grab side by side for me? Sure. I want to see which one's taller. So, so when they're looking completely at level, when they're level with each other... It looks to, at least it looks from where I'm standing... Not much of a difference. I might no. say the H the amp is a little shorter. A little. Oh, I actually think from you think my it's taller? perspective, it seemed a little bit longer. Here's my thing. But even it's super close. Even despite the height close. thing, here's what I'm gonna say. I think this on the 170 is wider than this. Like this is more tapered yeah. toward the bottom. Yeah, it is. It's a very nice thin aluminum. Um, the the overall clamp on this is nice. Um, you know I'm what though? Probably gonna go 170. Here. I was just gonna say I am too because. There's way more to grab onto with this. You get way more of a grip and ability to get your yeah. hopper stuck and unstuck. And that thumb wheel itself is so much bigger. I really like the Planet Eclipse <clears throat> thumb wheels because when I go like this, the notches are so large as compared to the um, amp where I can really use the tip of my finger to go back and forth with it. Right. Which is super nice as compared to this where like I have to grab it with both yeah, you, you can't just like no. get in there with your thumb. No. So yeah, I'm gonna go feed neck 170 yard, Doug. I'm agreeing. Okay, all right. I agree. So two another point for the for the uh, one seven neck. Tie. All right, next up would be I system between all of them. Um, so HK shock ramp or the regular shock. I keep on saying HK shock ramp. Bye HK. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the regular shock ramp. You are gonna need an Allen key right there. With that shocker amp, <clears throat> um, with the HK, it does toolless. offer a latch mechanism. It is toolless, very similar to the Lux. They designed it after the Lux, and you can see it's cable eyes, which I really like um, there. And the eyes system is toolless between the um, trigger frame compared to the body, which is really nice. You mean wireless, well. like wireless. like it just clamps? Yeah, my bad, wireless. Um, DSR Plus kind of interesting so i don't you hate mean, this if you want to yeah. take the barrel off so the dsr plus most die guns all die guns now offer the eye pipe system so the eye pipe is designed to create a physical barrier between your eye harness and the actual paint if you were to break paint um, so the fourth gen eye pipe is a little bit sturdier um, you can see it's got like a bluish hue to it um, and then you've got your actual eye harness inside of there so Doug, can you get in there oh i'm in there I don't even need the hand. Actually, the hand's oh, making yeah. it harder. Oh. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. So what's cool about this, guys, that I really <clears throat> like about the DSR Plus is when you take the bolt system out, if I chop paint with my M3 Plus, I just take my squeegee M3 and run plus? it through one time. You mean your DSR Plus? With my M3 Plus, it's the same. Oh, okay. It's the same eye system. Um, but with my M3 Plus, which also features this system, you just swipe it in, swipe it out, and clean off your eye pipe. Put your eye pipe back in, which can be kind of a finagle process. Yeah, it's you got to kind of borrow a finger from the feet. Yeah, but if you do it like you guys saw how easy it was for me, it's just because it's just a familiar. If your gun was thing. actually dirty, that was a whopping ten seconds, and it was clean, yeah. maybe fifteen. Right, between unscrewing the barrel and all that stuff. Right, it is unique. One thing is, is that you don't want to cramp your barrel down too tight. Um, that's the main problem with them with them cracking. Is that you are going to want to probably buy an extra fourth gen eye pipe to put in your. Um, Put, to put in with your gun. Sure. I think it's an interesting system. I, I don't hate it. I really don't. I don't either. XDR, normalize. Tool. You are going to have, you are gonna have a screw there. that you're going to need to um, unscrew to access your eyes. It is a cable system. 
Um, and then the 170R is unique because it is the only one that has a reflective eye system. So the lower board has two eyes that pop up and then use the eye cover as a reflective system. It's got a little mirror in there, right? Yeah. But it's toolless. It is toolless. Hold on, give me a second to focus that bad boy. Come on now. Come on now. There we go. Ah, there we go. Look at that. Yeah, so that's really cool because, in my opinion, I think it makes it a little bit easier to clean. Um, you also get extra of these reflective things with your parts kit, which is super cool. Um, so, I don't know, Doug. Between all the eyes, which one are you going with? So here's the thing, right? That is super nifty, pretty trustworthy. Nothing's really gonna like probably break. You could maybe break the mirror from a functionality standpoint. Yeah. Same. Have you have you seen the mirrors break before or no? Nope. So I have seen paint get behind the mirror. Okay. If you're really shredding paint. I have seen that, but it doesn't affect the functionality. It okay. still works. Okay. Which is really nice. And then we have this, which is super fast. Yep. But possibility that you could break the eye pipe. I haven't personally seen it. And especially with the fourth gen, I don't think it happens a whole lot. I think it's just a matter of communicating with people and saying, hey, don't tighten your barrel down too tight. And right. And won't have a problem. So then you got these bad boys, which I, I like that this is toolless, definitely, tried and true. Let's definitely rule this out. Yeah, that's yeah, because it's I got a tool probably rule that and a tool. Yeah. yeah. However, well, I'll still credit this because of the system, there's no wires to pinch. That is true. So that's for me, point. that's a tough call because no pinching wires and toolless. This is also toolless. Technically toolless, but They're you can pinch toolless. wires and you could break it. Toolless functionality is fine, but wires to pinch. No wires. Oh, there's no, also uh, that's right because it's the it's the because second it's board. It's that lower board that <clears throat> walks to the eye covers. So like from a functionality of taking the marker apart and mm -hmm. everything, I really like how the 170R functions. Okay, now for the detents of the 170R, is it your standard like kind of rubber standard detent? Standard Eclipse detents. So like, literally since like. Planet Eclipse was basically founded. They use the same detents across all their guns. Gotcha. So you buy like a 10 pack for like, I don't know how much they are, but you buy a 10 pack and they fit in that. They fit in GO4, LV 1.6, LV 2, everything. Even if you're trying to restore like an old ego, it would still fit? Yep. That's, personally, I think that's cool. I like when companies set their stuff up to be able to work generations later. I think that's awesome. That's why I like the LV 2. Slightly different, but with the rebuildable solenoid, you can keep your gun up and going. So anyway, getting back to this, I think for me... Is he going to admit to like and die? Mm. No, actually for <laughs> me, this is between the 170 and the HKM. Okay. Because they both don't have wires that you can pinch. Both are toolless. Yes. And both, like, like the only difference really is like the functionality of the eye itself, if that matters to you. <clears throat> the only reason that I would possibly give it to the HK amp is because the detents don't really need to be replaced because it's just that arm system. I've never heard of them having to be replaced. Um, no. The only thing I will say is that this lower board does talk to the upper board for the eye functionality behind it, and I, there can be a board, like, alignment issues mm. between the lower board and the upper board okay. of these. I've seen it maybe once or twice. Okay. Um, so that is a downfall, in my opinion, with the HK Shocker as compared to the 170R, which is pretty much bulletproof. So if I'm choosing between the two of these, um, I'm probably choosing the 170R for that reason. All right, you can pick 170R, it's fine. <laughs> I'm actually not picking either. I'm picking the DSR Plus. Yeah? Yeah. Because that easy clean? Uh, dude, I've used the M3 Plus. I've got well over 100,000 shots on M3 Plus. And from an eye perspective, super easy. Like, I just clean the, like, I can shred paint, take it all apart, run my thing through it. And the other thing too is like the harness sits in place. I've never once had to adjust the position of the harness to work properly. Gotcha. So like, I really like this system. It, it seems to work really well. You know, the eye pipe thing, just buy like an extra one or two of them and you'll be good for like the entire life of- You owning that gun. You owning that gun. Um, so from that standpoint, I really like like how simple it is. I'm gonna shock the crowd. I will go with the 170 over, uh -oh. over the HK amp simply because cleaning the eyes of any kind of amp, like once you actually get into it and pull it off, I find it to be a little kind of fickle. Like I've actually broken an eye wire cause I got a little too, so the way I do it is I use a little toothbrush thing. I just kind of pull the wire back and then I'm just kind of eh, over that. And then I pulled on it too hard as I was trying to get it to snap back in. You wouldn't really have that problem with the 170. Mm -hmm. So I'll right. give it to the 170 cause it's less easy to break stuff. Next <clears> up <throat> is battery changing. So shocker amp, three screws here. HK Toolless. amp, same thing. Um, this is oh, yes. toolless. You got to turn it 
180 degrees, which can be a real pain in the butt first few times that you do it. Uh, two screws here, and then 170R, you just pull this front sleeve off. Not much to debate here. I think we can save time on that one. 170R, yeah, for sure. Um, DSR Plus comes at a close second there. Um, this actually is going to be third because it's got one less screw than the Shockers. Uh, it is true, and I really actually like the board on the XCR. All right, Doug. So we've got battery changing. Uh, D and J both say that battery changing on the 170R is the way to go. Next up would be trigger. We've got the amp. The regular amp has like a blade style trigger. We've got the HK a, amp, which has a slightly different these are design. Like, I call this like an S trigger. S trigger? Yeah. Okay. Um, the Edge 2 trigger of the DSR Plus <clears throat> is... <laughs> I actually really like it. Um, me personally. I do... It's designed after a competitive shooting. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Really? Yeah, so look at that. I'm gonna feel it for myself. It's not that. I prefer the old DSR trigger. I really like that. This I like is, that better. Th this is okay. Yeah. My thing, and I'll point this out here. So like, okay, that works too. So with triggers and stuff like that, I think it makes so much more sense, and I'll use actually the XDR as the example here. The way your hand is naturally when you hold this stuff, this finger is out further than the other one, right? So it makes sense for the trigger to be that way where it lines up with that. Like, okay, shorter stroke for this one, shorter stroke for this one. Makes total logical sense. This defies all of that logic. The finger that's further away has to go further to hit the trigger, but then the top one that would hit it, whatever, cool, that's right here, that's fine. And I get it, a lot of people nowadays are just like single fingering their shit as they're playing. But I don't know, I personally still like to double trigger because it gets the ramp going faster. So I fundamentally don't like that you have to travel that much further with this. Mind oh, you, it feels fine. The responsiveness is nice. It's pretty light, so that's cool. But Doug just hates I. <laughs> this is the first I've really actually gotten to mess with a trigger for the XDR. Yeah, I so don't hate it. The XDR is a little bit different because it's really light. yeah, it's very very low. It sits very low on the. Um... I actually don't. I don't mind that. I really don't mind that. I. <clears throat> and famous what about the 170R? Line, not being a fan of this trigger. On the 170, on the Ether 3, on the LVs, like the LV2s now because they have the same kind of trigger. Not a fan. I don't love blade triggers. I put up with blade triggers on Luxes because I genuinely think the way those are set up that like you can make it not really react like a blade trigger. Mm -hmm. I don't like triggers that are super recessed back like this and all that. Yeah. I just, it's not... I do agree with you. Thing, um, so. I like how easy it is to just take the face off. The face of this, you can just take it off, um, which is really nice. And there are like aftermarket triggers for it, which is really nice. But yeah, I don't. Uh, if we're talking the, out of the box and not getting to the upgradability box yeah. yet, this is last place for me. Okay. I'm actually, I'm gonna, between these two, uh, honestly, amp triggers out of the box are not good. They're very sticky. The trigger itself is fine. The shape is good. The feeling is good. It's just, they're so, look at that. Look at yeah, that it's just, but that. Uh, you can mess with them though, because you, correct. Joel, Mr. Boss Dad, so guys, I don't know if you guys remember when we dropped our our personal uh, Shocker amps through Punishers. They were a Canada finish, super dope, really loved them. Joel's personal one, do you still have it or do you sell it? No, I sold it. So Joel's personal one, I don't know what you did to that, <laughs> yeah. that thing felt like God. Like that felt like I was fingering God, like it was amazing. So I- Like you were- <laughs> <laughs> I said that on purpose. So you can make these triggers feel really nice. Yeah. Um, I actually I'm between the set this, this down again because I want to okay. touch this one I between know. between that one as compared to the regular one. This is different. It is different. This is different. It's it so seems make like a it's decision. still sticky. <laughs> it seems like it's still sticky or whatever, but it like it's really responsive. So if I had to rate these, I'm gonna say one. HK Shocker. Yep. Two. Really? Yeah, I actually like it a lot. Three because of the responsiveness. Mm -hmm. Four because out of the box it sucks. Mm -hmm. And five because I don't care what you do to this. I'm not gonna like it. Okay um, I'm gonna go with HK shocker number one. Okay, and then thereafter The only reason why I'm not picking this is my number one because I do like how it feels. I love how it feels is this Oh uh, trigger guard's too small for you. Yeah, it's like, yeah. you know bang, 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 bang. <laughs> So I don't like that um, trigger guard on the on the shocker amp is much larger. Yep. Um, and yes, you do. I do agree with you 100%. They come really snappy from the factory. That's as simple as there's a screw up here. You just loosen that. We have a video on that. I'll link magnetic. to it. Yep. Just back that out a little bit. It makes it a lot smoother. 
I'm going to go with the HK amp. Um, cool. I just really love how it feels. Um, so what would you say, Doug? Uh, HK amp is also my number one pick. Okay. Next up, we got board slash programming. Between mm. all of these, the board on both of these is going to be very similar. We've already heard how you feel about that board. Um, we've got the DSR Plus board. Is this... Yeah, so it's programmable. That's not focusing. That's fine. Yeah, so this has a joystick, five-way joystick. So yep. in and out, one, two, three, four, up, down, side to side. Um, this has a recharge. First of all, this is the only one that's rechargeable. Ooh. Um, so it is is not take a normal um, battery. I think we talked about it in the battery section. Nope, we didn't hit that. Rechargeable. Well, I think I said that it took a nine volt. It doesn't take a nine volt. It's rechargeable. Um, which you actually charge from the back. It has this like little flap that I don't Ooh. understand what the hell they were doing there because that's going to definitely come off. Um, but it does take USB-C to charge it. So there is that one. And then you've got the 170R with um, just the OLED board. All these are going to be very similar as far as programmability and all that stuff. I would say programming, the DSR Plus can be kind of confusing. I would say that's my least favorite. The shockers are very easy. All yep. you're going to do... That's like caveman simple. Yep. Hold the trigger and turn Hold it on. Hold the trigger, turn it on, and it's going to go into all your different programming. Very, very simple there. And you cycle through by clicking the trigger. Correct. And then if you want to change the setting, you hold the trigger. And then you just simply turn it off, turn it back on. Boom, boom, boom. Very simple on that front. Does not have a shot count reader. Does have a shot count reader, but very confusing. Um, unfortunately, there's no battery in this one to turn on and off, but... Um, I think people will trust us in the fact that, like... And the other thing, too, is I have seen the OLED board go wrong in this and the joystick go wrong on this. So, unfortunately, like, I'm not crazy about the OLED board on the D DSR Plus. This one is my sleeper. Yeah, actually you actually love, like that. Yes, I actually love the XDR. So, just a simple... It hasn't, doesn't have much charge on it because it's been sitting for a while. But um, So, very simple. Hold that to t eyes off. Hold that, uh, pull the trigger, and check that out. Boom. Wow. Yes. Up, down, to adjust everything. Very, very simple. In my opinion, I really like how uh, user-friendly, intuitive the interface is on that. So that one is definitely good. And then with the 170R, you're going to turn it on. This does have an uh, LED, so in mm. highlight situations, you're still going to be able, even though you might not be able to see your screen, you're going to be able to see this up here. Same thing with the DSR Plus, same thing with the HK Shocker. Um, and then same thing, turn it off, turn it back on, pull the trigger, turn it back on. Same thing, you're gonna be okay. able to. Now I will say, I think that their overall, I think is more settings with the 170R. Okay. And the um, manual is gonna walk you through every single setting. The shocker amp doesn't have as many settings, um, and there's no like clear cut manual on what everything means. Yeah, I kind of had to figure it out for myself. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, Doug. This one's this one's a hard one. I think. I like, think it comes down to between these two. The 170R and the XDR. Yeah, because diagons are confusing to program, like in general. These are incredibly simple, but for the fact that you can't do as much, I think that should be a factor. Like that you can like can you get further into programming stuff with this than you can with the shocker? Not really. Okay. There's not like a ton of like super sensitive stuff on it. So I would say the board is probably the most complicated with the 170R. Well, complicated, not complicated, but most involved. Like you can change a lot of different random settings and stuff like that. And since pretty much all of them other than the die would be that same kind of hold the trigger, turn it on, and then cycle yeah. through it with the trigger. Yeah. If you can get further into the gun with that, then I would give it to the 170. Yeah, man. I don't know. That's a hard one for me. I think I'm probably going to either pick the, the Shocker or the XDR, either one. Uh, if I'm trying to be as objective as I can, I'm picking that because you can do more with it. I love how stupid simple the Shocker is. It didn't really take me long fair. to figure out. For most people, though, like, let's talk about that. For most people, most people aren't going to be, like, thinking about, like, some random super sensitive setting. Right. They just right? want to point and shoot. Yeah. So from a point and shoot perspective, I do like the amp. But to your point... If you really are a tech guy, so I don't know. That's a hard one. I'm probably gonna pick Shocker. I'll agree with it. Um, I'll make that easy for the sake of the board. Shocker. Yeah. So, all right. So next up, we've got ASA. Okay, I'll run through this. So you have a turn knob, a lever system that he hates, the 
other lever system. This one is no bueno. Another turn knob and then the um, POPS ASA. Standard Planet Eclipse function. Um, personally, I like this lever. I don't have an issue with this, which is on my shocker. I kind of don't get the point of this segment, but we have to talk about it. I like this, but I understand that most of the world likes the pops. It is easy. It's it's stupidly easy. You just go, and it's there. So, I don't know. What do you think, boss? I'm going to go with HK Shocker. Yeah? Yeah. You with me on that one? Um, I like this one. Not, I'm, I don't have any problem with this one. I like this one because the way that I hold my gun. So, that's mm. the only reason. Um, so, it is a partial preference thing. Can you me. show people why? What do you do? Yeah. See, he gets super low on it, is why. Yeah. So it gives him somewhere to put his hands. Whereas with this one, it's still not as bad, right? But it, the knob kind of gets in the way a little bit. Right. Um, so that's really the only reason I'm picking the HK Shocker. This one, they did themselves a disservice. They could have put the slaps this. on this and made it so They did better. improve it They from the regular DSR Plus. It is better. Um, but it is still plastic. It is still prone to breaking and all that stuff. So I'm definitely not going that route. This is a twist knob, but it's super... Really long. Like, kind of in the yeah, way. Protruded. And this one is just... Ugly. It's a pops. Yeah. Oh, so you think it's ugly? It's ugly. Wow, I actually don't think it's that unattractive. Get at me, bro. <laughs> all right, so which one are you picking? I'm, I'm going with the HK. I like the lever. D and J agree on that. Mm -hmm. Ergonomics. Ergos... Out of all of them. All right, hold this. Let me do a, do a quick rundown here. This is cool. I don't mind the foregrip on here. The distance from here to here is too big for me. I don't love that. Like, I feel I can't really close my hand around it. Okay. So, not the worst that I've ever held in my life, but eh, not going to win here. This guy, I do actually really like. This actually fits in my hand pretty well. Okay. Um, just feels a little kind of loose up here with the rubber, and I wish this was a little longer. Like I don't, I don't mind getting all super up long close here. Yeah, this this is like, you think this Pretty, is long? No, not that, but but the overall length of the marker the, is long. Uh, it, it, I don't hate that. That I don't. It's more the length of the foregrip here. I'm yeah, it's a little crazy. nub. I don't mind the DSR, um, that UL frame or the, this here, like the hourglass shape. That's super nice. It feels good to hold on to. I feel like I can get like a decent grip on it as I'm like diving into places. But again, this foregrip is just a little short. short. I like the shape of it better than this. Like this is rounded, this is a little more square. I kind of like it for some reason because it's not too big, but it could do with being longer. Between these two, I'm an amp user. I love it. It's the right size for my hands. This fits me very well. I feel like I can get in very tight with this, okay? Enough room to get my thumb through it or I can go over top if I want. I like a skinnier foregrip, but I did not realize that I would like an in-between more. This is a good length of foregrip for me. And I like the width down here, and I like that it tapers up here for the for like your top knuckle. I really like this foregrip, and it seems like it'd be so weird, but like agreed. So for me, the ergonomics for the rest of them, it's going to be relatively the same for the back handle, except for the 170. But for the fact that I like how I can tuck into the foregrip of this one so much, I'm going HK amp for ergonomics. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, HK amp is I like the fact that they made it bigger because that was my biggest complaint with this is. That was too thin for my hands. Um, so like, I like that it's thin. It's thin this way. Yep. It's longer this way. I can grip it low. I can grip it high. And it's and fat it still this feels way. Good. It's fat that way. Yep, 100%. DSR Plus isn't bad. Um, I do like the rubber. Yep, oh, the not, rubber is good. Feel like the feel of the rubber. Biggest problem with this is trigger frame size area. Yep. Um, love the UL frame, love the trigger. Um, Dude, you dwarf that thing when you hold it. <laughs> I'm just yeah, like realizing yeah. right now. <laughs> well, yeah, it just disappears, right? Like literally, my pinky's not even on it. So unfortunately, if they made this longer, I probably might and made the trigger frame bigger. I'd probably pick that. But um, XDR is too long for me. I hate the trigger. And then uh, 170R, same thing. To your point, too short. The front is too short. Otherwise, right. it'd be a contender. Um, so yeah, HK Shocker 100% wins for me on that front. Uh, next up, weight. Uh, grab the scale. Yeah, let's bust out the scale. All right, so next up, we are going to do the weight. We have our trusty scale here. Doug, you want to scale in on that? All right, so first up, we'll do the shocker amp. We'll kind of go in line here. One pound, 
12.2 ounces for the regular shocker. The HK shocker is going to be one pound, 14.8. So already that's losing. DSR plus is one pound, 14.7. Tie ball game between those two. But XTR still winning. Is two pounds. Chonker. Last but not least, we've got the G-Tech 170R, one pound, 14.3. So wow. guys, we got three guns that are in that 1.14 range. But are we surprised? So, uh, super lightweight. Look at that. Regular amp. Tiny baby gun. All right, next up is maintenance, Doug. Uh, since we've since we're running so long on all these, maintenance wise, these are all toolless bolt rem bolt removal. Toolless okay. bolt removal. Uh, obviously, eyes, there's the. I think would be an important point. Toolless eyes is a big one, so that's going to rule out this guy and that guy. Um, I think maintenance wise it's going to be hard to argue that probably the H or the Planet Eclipse G-Tech 170R is going to be the easiest to maintenance. You think so? Yeah, because you've got the Gamma Core which is super trustworthy and a few things. Toolless eye covers, toolless battery which I would incorporate into maintenance. Yep. Um, and then easiest to access the regulator since I work on all these, work on these all the time. These two screws, boom, you can immediately access your piston your HPR piston as well as your reg seat. Hmm. Whereas like this one, you gotta take the grips off, take two screws out, and then this one. These can just be a little fickle. You gotta kind of tap it out, but it's not the it's end of the not, world. Yeah, it's not the end of the world, but for, you know, we're, we are, the only reason I'm not throwing this into the mix is because it's not toolless eyes. Mm. Um, so you well, can have- Well, that one is, but the standard amp is not. Or, um, sorry, battery. Gotcha. So it does have toolless eyes, but it doesn't have toolless battery. So for that reason, I'm gonna go G Tech 170R is the easiest maintenance, um, and t on top of the maintenance thing, like you are, have the full color manual, you have all the O rings, you have duplicates of every single size O ring. That's fair. Um, so I think maintenance wise, G Tech 170R. Doug, what do you think? I'd say it's a little bit of a wash between the 170 and the fucking uh, the amps, but I can understand with the toolless battery that is absolutely part of it. Because my all right, argument, Doug, I'll give you. The yeah, put put, put mine put mine for the amp because that's the a that's HK a shocker. near toolless body separation, like to get into the body of the gun is near that's toolless. Right. Whereas for the 170, there's more screws that gotta happen to get next. the body off. So, yeah. all right. So next we've got build quality slash reliability. There's been a few issues with these as far as like um, O rings inside the spool, O rings inside the regulator. So unfortunately, I'm gonna rule this one out. Um, people have an efficiency issues with these occasionally, like not all the time, but like I'm going being very, very hard on this right, right. now, guys, because all these are gonna be good. Here's ready. I'm gonna let me make this easy. Okay, I'm just gonna set this up and look down the line at y'all here. <clears throat> very rugged. History of being good. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> you already heard Joel talk about it. You don't want to hear me talk about it. As far as the shockers go, I love them, and I do think that they're fine now. They're also very rugged. I think you can beat it up just as much as a 170. However, out of the gate, when they first came out, a lot of QC issues, so I will submit to the 170 for this category of reliability. Um, yeah, I would say so. I mean, the shock ramp is probably a close tie, Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's the 170 once again. Yeah. Between all of them. All right, uh, tech support guys would be the next question. Um, the shocker does a pretty good job of getting things back to people. So does die. And then, um, Mac dev is literally non-existent for the most part, unfortunately. So just being honest. So, um, if you know how to work on your own guns, you're probably going to be in good shape with Mac dev. I've owned Mac dev guns. As long as you feel comfortable with it, I don't think it's a problem. And then obviously G tech 170 R Planet Eclipse product. I'm going to go G tech 170 R as far as tech support goes. I actually think die would be a close second for me. Um, I'm a little bit biased, Doug, you're probably a little bit biased because you have friends that work for DLX, um, but like for the normal customer that doesn't have personal connections within the industry, I think that like Planet's the best. And then, For the um, normal customer that doesn't have connections in the industry, let's think of the regional leagues that we have out here. Um, that's a good point. The only ones that show up are PE and Shocker. Yep. Or PE and DLX that, that come to these events. So and I will say, like, Shocker did not send a booth. Shocker slash DLX did not send a booth to the last MSXL. Okay. So Planet Eclipse was the only gun company that had a booth. Die didn't. 
HK or uh, Shocker did not, MacDev did not. So, like, if you had a problem, Planet Eclipse was your only option. So, from a tech support standpoint, can we agree on the 170R? Sure. Because they're okay. always there. All right, upgradeability. Uh, you can do triggers for these well, and let's triggers talk for about mech frames because mech frames oh, yeah, yeah, is going to yeah. be important, right? Well, so, mech frame, mech frame. Mech um, frame for the 170, mech frame for the XDR. All because that was their whole thing. Actually, all of them. DSR. The DSR Plus is going the mech frame. What? Yeah, mech frame. What? Coming out, baby. I didn't hear that yet. What the hell? Okay. Yeah. So it is coming out. Um, for those watching this video, maybe like way in the future, be like, yeah, it's been out. Well, this video is being made, and you know, end of September 2022. Yes. So yeah, wasn't so, here yet. Uh, you can upgrade. All these are auto cocker threads, so you're gonna be able to do that. Um, you can upgrade the trigger on the. Uh, 170R. To my knowledge right now, there's nothing that you can do with XDR, so that's a no. Um, mech frame here, obviously. Uh, barrels, you can, I think, put a different feed neck on. Feed neck, really? And then trigger, you can third source triggers, but that's... Oh, is that the 3D printed do. stuff? Yeah, 3D printed stuff. Um, and then shocker, they do make, uh, Infamous does make some triggers. You can get a soft tip bolt for either the 170R or this, mm. and or as well as like an adrenaline bolt. So I think upgrade ability bolt. trigger. It's going to either be the 170R or the HK sh or the shockers. If you can actually get that bolt, I would say the shockers because a bolt is a pretty. You can get. Can you get a bolt uh, for the 170? You can get SSC soft tip, and you can get the adrenaline bolt. So you can get two different bolts. That you can get SSC soft tip, or you can just get the ST three gamma core soft tip is that not what it already comes that, with as well as triggers what's that does it not come with that stock no oh. no it does not so that's that's a tie for me between the uh shocker and the 170 yeah uh, i'd put it down for both yeah yeah yeah, for sure we might be forgetting something if you guys have any things to leave in the comments definitely put in the comment yeah, and for go sure. ahead and roast him so all right doug so we're through the subjective or the objective portion of this let's get into the subjective we've got a few things to talk about when it comes about shooting and all that stuff Shot quality, paint handling, efficiency, and then overall value, which is going to be our winner and why. All right, Doug. So from a shot perspective, I mean, efficiency, paint handling, and shot quality. Um, we all know that out of all these, efficiency-wise, the shocker is going to be the best. Yeah. Uh, as far as efficiency goes, there's very little arguing about that. Um, so the shocker takes that paint handling between all of them. Is really good. I don't think I foresee paint handling one way or another between any of them. I st so <laughs> I've put my finger in the breach for all of these and like gotten like done that with my finger. I think the amp was the lightest on my body personally. Um, it's just me, but I I'll give paint handling to the amp personally. Okay. Um, um, for me, paint handling is going to be it's going to be a tie. Between, I've seen I've seen the Gamma Core actually chop a little bit of paint, so I think that like for me, Gamma Core and the XDR are going to be out for that. Um, the the uh, Flex DSR Flow Plus is a nice bolt, shot. Yeah, it has it has a really good shot, and the paint handling is good. Um, the amp I've shot plenty of tournament paint through an amp, super brittle paint, never had any issues. Um, if you guys would actually like to see us shooting these videos, we have videos of every gun shooting on our YouTube channel, so we're not going to be somewhere. doing that here. Um, so for me, overall wise, overall considering everything, I'm going to pick from a shot quality perspective, I'm picking the amp. And here's why. Best efficiency, um, really, really good feel. I think that the DSR Plus shoots smoother mm -hmm. than the amp, Okay. but I like the feel of the amp enough, and I don't have to worry about efficiency coming from the shocker as compared to the DSR plus if we're just judging shot quality by itself I'm gonna give it to the DSR plus okay and then efficiency wise I'm giving the shocker the winner there okay so is that the, was that the last item I think it was the last item what's that put us at score wise oh um, go do math all right so here are the numbers guys um, so Doug gave the G Tech 170R six points, and so did I. The DSR Plus Doug gave zero points. I gave the DSR Plus. Did three. I really not give it anything? No, you didn't give it anything. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got the Shocker Amp. Doug gave the Shocker Amp seven points, and I gave the sh just the regular Shocker Amp five points. 
Uh, the HK Shock ramp had nine points from Doug and six points from me, and then the XDR unfortunately didn't win anything as far as, yeah, so you could at least give him the trigger to XDR. I think I almost it. did. Okay. All right, so with that, Doug, um, if you're ju- base it, basing it just strictly off of the numbers, the HK Shock ramp coming in at the highest price point is what you would pick, but overall value-wise... Are you going to pick that as compared to the regular shocker? I'll take or the regular. Or value wise, are you what are you picking? Value wise, I would take the regular amp just for the sheer fact of like that shot quality and the feel of the gun and the handling and all that is completely fine for me. For an extra three hundred dollars, that foregrip is not worth it, nor is the toolless um, the toolless eyes. So the fact that the rest of the gun is arguably the same for three hundred fewer dollars, I think I'd rather stick with the standard amp. Gotcha. Okay. What about you? Um. Overall value, I'm probably picking... So overall value, I'm going to pick the GTEC 170R. Um, and the reason I say that is because it probably has the highest amount of features. I think I gave it six points, and the only thing that I tied with was the HK Shocker. But the HK Shocker, once again, is going to come in at $300 at least extra price. Yep. Um, so for that reason, although there's some great things about the HK Shocker, I am going to pick the GTEC 170R, 170R overall. Just because, you know, it's toolless eye covers, it's toolless battery exchange, super easy to maintenance. Um, it's got a good shot, in my opinion. I'm not crazy about the shot, but it is a really good shot. But overall, guys, if you're looking for, like, something that's reliable... Plug and play. That's the whole point play. of that mid-tier kind of level. Plug and play. Go spend, like, save a little bit on buying the gun. You know, that, that extra 600 that would have got you a Lux or yep. one of the higher-end PE guns? Go spend that on paint. Yep. Buy a decent tank, a decent hopper. Go play with that money. But Doug, overall, like these guns are all phenomenal. You will not have a bad experience with any one of them. We're doing the nitty gritty work for you, so you can just take this and run with it. Yeah. So, but if you guys did happen to like this video, make sure to give us a like, drop a comment, have a conversation with us. In the description here, we'll have links for all these guns. So definitely use one of those to get what you're going to get, so that way we know what you guys actually are interested in, right? But again, thank you guys for watching so much. Stick with us here on the channel. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one. See you guys. So free.